What's up YouTube? My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing well. The weather's gorgeous here, roasting hot. We had a beach day yesterday, so I've got a bit of a brown face. <laughs> so I didn't go red though, which is good. But anyway, um, last video's just gone out. I've just gone in and had a look at some of the comments. And everybody's trying to poke fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, first up, yes, they're very blue. But we had blue bikes, so it sort of went. It ain't gonna look good on Asbo though, I'll give you that one. <laughs> The other thing they're going on about is, go on then, can you fit in them still? <laughs> oh, you don't, you know. <laughs> Last time I wore those leathers, I'm sure was 1997, because I started in 95, and that was in the Rookies on a 600, and then we went to the two-man team with Sol, uh, and that's when the leathers, I got the leathers, so they were made to measure for me in 1996. <laughs> and then I used them the following year as well on the 600s again, but that was that was just me, that wasn't with soul. Um, and then when I went to the bigger bikes and stuff, yeah, thousands and whatnot, then I, I got a different set of leathers. Um, so the last time I was in them, I reckon, I'm pretty sure, it was 1997, and I might have got a little bit chubby. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Everyone's going, go on, put them on, give us a giggle. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> right, how am I gonna do this then? Um, God, they're really heavy. They were a lot heavier than those. <laughs> but then again, I suppose they was made back in the day. Thick stuff. Um, right, these are microphone. You still on? You still on? Yes, we're still on. Right. Uh, <laughs> Stick it in the vice, that'll do it. <laughs> there we go. Right, if anyone's peeing themselves laughing at this. <laughs> oh, I'm getting in the right mess. Right. <laughs> 1997, how much have I grown? <laughs> well, actually, I suppose we should do it fair and stick a back protector in. Because that's what it was made to measure with. And I never went on track without one, so we'll stick that on. Right. <laughs> I'll do it, I said I would. Well, that's a start, I ain't got chubby ankles, look. Bloody hell, they really are heavy. Oh, come on, undo. Here we go. More testicle. <laughs> oh, that's stunning. Remember there'd been a little bit more room down there before. <laughs> oh look, I'm in. Well I'm in. Oh, work mostly. <laughs> oh, it makes sense when you're like that. It doesn't like that though. <laughs> I can still get in my leathers. Look. Oh, I'm chuffed with that. See, that's not bad, is it? 23 years later, and I'm still as unfit as I was then. <laughs> Happy days. Now I've just got to get them off. <laughs> I'll remember this in the paddock. You always turn around to your pit gimp and hold on that for a second, will you? And then you can kind of twist out of it. Oh, I ain't got a pit gimp. Um. <laughs> I'm stuck. <laughs> I 
Oh no. Right, you can go there. <laughs> there you go. Hold on to that for a sec. Up with that actually. I didn't think it was going to happen, but it did. <laughs> <laughs> right, let me get out of this lot and I'll tell you what's going on. That's a good addition to the workshop. Right, what am I doing? Right, a um, couple of little things left to do to get her back to stock. I want to get the bike stock. Never had one, and I want to know what they go like. And there's no point in like making an opinion until it is stock and you know what's what. So we're going back to standard gearing. I've got a 15 tooth front sprocket, 48 rear. Uh, what are these? JT sprockets, nothing special, but they are the right size. At the minute, she's geared short. I know it's got one tooth extra on the back and I think it's gone one down on the front. But all that means is that you're tap dancing all over the gearbox. <laughs> and it does cause problems as I found out. Um, I only took two weeks and I got my collar felt by plod. <laughs> Duh. What's happening is, like, even going from a standing start at a junction up to 30 miles an hour, the limit, I mean, she's not a quiet bike, she's not. But because it's geared really short, you're getting through your gears really, really quick. You spend no time in it at all and then you're snatching the next gear and then the next one and then the next one. So it sounds like you're on a proper hoon. And PC Plob was a couple of cars in front and he pulled me over and had a word. <laughs> Why are you ragging the rubbish out of that? And he said, I'm not, it's just geared really short. And he wanted a biker, so he didn't get it. <laughs> I did tell him to go and watch the channel, but I don't think he's going to. He just told me off. So, um, she's going back to standard gearing. Um, and it does, it, that in itself is going to change some stuff. It's going to lengthen the wheelbase. Um, so it is going to handle a little bit differently. And I ain't going to be tap dancing all over the gearbox either. Um, I will lose a tiny bit of, t of acceleration. Um, I will get a little bit more top speed. Um, but you're not talking much. It's just the rideability of the thing. That's, that's the thing that's compromised. Pe people short gear it to get more power. You don't get more power, you get more acceleration. <laughs> and the other thing is dog bones. <laughs> These are doing the rounds. He's going to think I'm picking on him again, but I ain't. <laughs> um, the, I've got no idea what's on it. No idea. Uh, it does feel like it's like up on its nose a little bit. Um, and like I say, I've got no idea what is on it. I think it has been jacked up um, from what Jack was saying, the, the fellow that I bought it off. And he's also got another jack up kit as well. Um, so I've bought these ones. These are standard ones. They've just got a B marked on them. We'll measure all this stuff up. But you can see that they're a little bit longer than these ones that he had. Um, and I don't, and th this is a jack up kit. Um, so it could even be stock what's on it. I don't know. So I've just bought these and we're sticking them on anyway. And even if it is the same, I don't really care. At least in my head, I know it is stock. And that's just how they're supposed to handle. And that's the geometry you're supposed to have and all that other stuff. Um, these are not that much shorter, but they are going to jack it up. The shorter you go, the higher the back, basically. However, you have to be careful doing this. You really, really do. I mean, you can get 30 mil, 50 mil, 70 mil. That's like a three inch jack up. <laughs> that is gonna change all sorts of stuff. And I will try and explain bits and pieces of it. There's, there's gonna be people out there that um, can explain it an awful lot better. But I will tell you some of the things to look out for. Cause you could be in a world of pain if you get that too wrong. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. Get the back wheel out. Um, to change these, I'm probably going to have to take the um, foot peg off on the right hand side. But we'll get these back to stock so I know it's all good. We're going to measure it before and after as well, just so we can see what's what. And, and you know, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just do that. The only other thing that I've got to do 
is, but I'm, I'm waiting till after the dyno, is I need to get the rear shock out and I need to get that stripped and serviced. This, this bike was built or registered rather in 1996 um, and I don't think the shock has ever been serviced. It does look a bit crusty. It reacts really, really slowly compared to the front. The front's all been stripped and done because I did that, but the back end been touched. So that's going to be going off to Simon Rolls um, once we've had the dyno done. Um, and then once I fit that, everything is as it should be and working properly. Um, so that's what a stock one is going to be like, apart from the exhaust. <laughs> and then we can start playing about with all this sort of thing. That'd be cool. Right, let's get on with it. Right, it's so a dog paint. Uh, I will get some pictures and just put them up on screen so you can see what's what. But the, uh, the dog bones basically run between the shock and the swing arm. So what we've got is there's um, the bottom suspension linkage. One end of it is connected to the frame, this front one. And then the back end is connected to the shock. Okay. The dog bone is mounted from the middle and it goes up and connects to the swing arm. All right, so all you're doing is changing that length, okay? It's like a rising rate suspension, basically. Um, but the thing is, it controls the angle that the swing arm is actually sitting at. So if you put a shorter one on, essentially you're pulling the swing arm down, which ain't gonna go anywhere because the ground's in the way. So the back end of the bike goes up. Does that make sense? It does in my head. But that's basically all the dog bones are doing. Um, but you are going to be changing a number of things that you need to consider because they are all important to the way that a bike handles. Right, just to try and explain why sticking a massive lift kit on your bike is a stupid idea, <laughs> I will share my thoughts with it. However, before we get into that, I'm going to tell you again, I am not a mechanic. I'm not a mechanical engineer, I'm not a design engineer, I don't work for Suzuki, I don't work in a drawing office, none of that stuff. I'm just a fellow with a workshop who loves his bikes and used to race them and picked up a few things along the way. <laughs> do your own research, do your own homework, figure it out for yourself. Go and ask someone who is trained and qualified and get their opinion, but don't just take my word for it. I hope that's clear enough, I do. But anyway, let, let me try and explain. Right, okay, another really bad drawing of a front sprocket with a chain run around a rear sprocket. There's your rear wheel, there's your swing arm and there's the pivot point for the swing arm there. Okay, so this point and this point are fixed in space. They ain't shifting, they ain't changing where they are. Um, the swing arm can obviously move up and down and it pivots around this point. And people just think, well, if you spin this sprocket that way, it's gonna pull the chain, which makes the wheel spin and that's what makes you go. And in basic terms, yeah, you're right. However, there's an awful lot of forces going on here and the way it's designed is actually quite clever because there's anti-squat that's kind of built into it. Um, and there's a number of forces action on this that basically cause that to happen. So, um, first thing is the chain pull. Um, the chain is being pulled in that direction. Okay, because this front sprocket is driven, it's going that way, it's pulling the chain, which is obviously going around this sprocket, which is at a fixed point there. So it's kind of, it's trying to pull it up like this. So essentially it's trying to flatten out the swing arm. God, the wind is really getting up here. Um, so that's one of the forces at play, which is trying to cause motion and movement in your swing arm. Another thing is that you've got a weight transfer. So weight, you give it large, the weight on the bike transfers towards the rear. So this is basically being pushed down. Yeah, it's being mashed into the floor. That's why it wheelies. <laughs> However, you do want a certain amount of weight transfer because that squashes the tyre into the tarmac and that's what gives you grip. So you do want a degree of that. Um, and that's a good thing. However, you've also got a driving force 
in essence. So there is an angle here. This isn't straight, and I'll tell you why it's not in a minute. <laughs> so that's horizontal, and then it comes down to, to, to where your, um, your hub or your rear wheel is. And imagine it's kind of like that. Right? I know it's, it's, it's not, but imagine it's like that. This and this is fixed in space, but this moves up and down. So at the contact patch where it meets the tarmac, the tyre spinning that way, um, this is moving, the ground ain't moving, and it causes a driving force to go that way. All this lot is connected at the centre pin, so the driving force is trying to push the swing arm down. This is what we mean by anti-squat. Okay, so it's counteracting it. You've got the chain run that's trying to stretch it up, and you've got the driving force which is trying to push it forwards, and that's what basically stops the back end of your bike collapsing too much when you give it large. It's anti-squat, and it's designed into it. It's a really clever thing. Now, um, modern sports bike, because this angle is so critical, um, the, the, you need to be able to balance out the amount of anti-squat you get when you're giving it large. Ideally, you want more of it when you're really compressing the suspension. God, look at them out there with armour. So basically you want more anti-squat the more beans you give it and this is um, where you get rising rate suspension linkages which is kind of what I've got on, on, on ASBO. Um, the other option is like a CX500 where you've just got a shock that goes between the swing arm to the frame. There is no linkage in it at all that doesn't have a rising rate suspension. All right, you just got whatever you've got stored up in the shock. But this is quite a clever design. Um, modern sports bikes, because, because this angle is so critical in balancing out that rising rate, modern sports bikes, you can actually adjust the position of this pivot point. Um, I think the ZX 10 r has got it, the new R1 has got it. Um, not sure about the RSV4, but but you know they're all getting it basically, and the reason is is that the um, World Superbikes and British Superbikes and all that lot they can only use homologated bikes, so it has to be on the frame for them to use it. Tuning the the position of the pivot point is so critical to getting proper good handling out of a motorcycle that the manufacturers designed it into the bike in the first place just so the World Superbike boys could use it and win races. That's how important it is. You go monkeying about with dog bones and changing all this position, potentially you're in a world of pain. At best, you're gonna have crap handling unless you deal with it. I mean, that's it. Take it how it's meant. I'm not, um, I'm not, you know, this isn't a masterclass on geometry and suspension and all that other stuff. It's just not. Um, but if you're going to change anything on a bike, there is a consequence to it and you need to understand it. Um, people, I get why people put a jack-up kit in it. You know, they're going for a certain look and this, that and the other. They're not really bothered about the performance or the handling or any of the rest of it. They just get used to it, learn how to ride it and, you know, they, they don't give it proper large, I suppose. Well, certainly not pushing the bike as much as it could be pushed. Um, but it's, you, you can't, these rooms full of very clever people that work for Suzuki, all sitting in their little cubicles designing all this, they know a hell of a lot more about it than you or I do. <laughs> you know, they're engineers, they're mechanical engineers, automotive engineers. There's equations for all this stuff. I ain't got a clue what they are, but they're important. And some clever fella came up with them, and this is what they came out with. So gooning about with stuff, you know, you have to be careful. Don't stray too far from it, because it won't thank you for it. <laughs> Reason why I want to get this back to stock is I've been riding Asbo now for a couple of weeks. Just, you know, getting used to the old girl and see what she can do and what she feels like. And it is a sit up and beg bike compared to the sports bikes that I've had in the past. So you're upright on it like this, you get the wind hitting you in the chest, and it's quite a light bike compared to some of the stuff I've had. So you do get blown about a bit, and what I'm noticing is because it's all jacked up, 
And, you know, we've shortened the, the, you know, we've monkeyed about with the rake and trowel because of the jack-up kit and all this other stuff. Um, the buffeting that you're getting on your chest when you're riding it is translating into steering inputs. Right, and she is twitchy. And I don't like it. <laughs> so we're going to go way back to stock. We're going to get the thing riding how it should be, how it was designed to ride and handle. And then we're going to see what we can tweak and change. But we're only going to be doing little bits and pieces. Um, that's where this lot comes in, actually. I'll show you what I've got in here. Ah. Right, that's them. Yeah. Apparently, this is a set of forks off. Uh, I have no idea what year or anything else. I think they came out, uh, I want to say 97, something like that. Um, GSX R600 or 750S rad, basically. Uh, and these are going to be the forks that eventually gets onto ASBO. Um, reason being is um, essentially they're a cartridge fork. So I get control over stuff like rebound and compression and preload and all that stuff, which I haven't got on the standard forks. Um, so at the top here, it's, it's the same as most modern day bikes actually, but you've got uh, the big bit, that's the preload adjuster. This is the rebound adjuster, obviously one on each fork leg, and the compression adjusters. Uh, where's the compression adjuster? Where's the compression adjustment? Right, all the, uh, right, I need to check on this then. Um, I'm sure... Right, normally there is a compression adjustment that's in the bottom of the fork leg. Um, but this ain't got one. And I'm sure the S, because it says it's adjustable compression and rebound. I don't know, maybe it's all done off the top and done through the cartridge. Don't know, I have to look at that. Actually, if anyone has got an SRAD or access to an SRAD, <laughs> can you have a look at the fork legs for me and see if there's a bolt or a little adjuster screw down the bottom here somewhere? Because um, that's kind of what I was expecting. It could all just be done off the top, I don't know, just done through the cartridge. Um, right, a little bit of homework needed then. <laughs> but if you have a look, they are manky as hell. It's all corroded and pitted and everything else. All this lot will dress out. Ain't gonna be running a front mud guard. Probably. I don't know, I haven't decided yet when I build it. Um, but all this lot can get sorted out. That's all nice. There's no pitting or anything on the travel area. There's a little bit of a mark up here which we're gonna need to dress out and polish up. Um, and the yokes just need a damn good cleaner. Um, fork seals were obviously shot. That all needs to be replaced. Bearings look ancient and antique and the races are horrible, so it's all new bearings there. Uh, you know, headstock bearings are going to be needed. But I've got the, the yokes and the axle, so it's all good. It's all sweet. It's a start at least. Um, brakes are obviously going to have to change as well. I'm going to need a set of brake calipers, but there's a few options that fit on here, I think. Um, and we'll have to have a look and see about the front wheel and whatnot as well. I have got the 600 and I have got the bandit set over there. Ideally, I want to go with the bandit set, but I'm not sure this is going to fit. But we can try. We can try and get it sorted. Um, they are a tiny bit shorter. Ooh, they are a tiny bit shorter in length. So we will be dropping the front just a little bit. Um, but I don't think we're going to be too far off. And once we get all the geometry sorted, and I know how I want it to handle and how it want it to feel and all that sort of stuff this is going to be a good addition i think yeah i'm happy with that well i'm not happy with this
but I might be if it's not supposed to be there. <laughs> it's just going to be way better than what's on there at the minute. Sweet! Right, so I've just got a digital protractor. Um, if you stick it on the bench, let it settle down, zero that, and we consider that to be flat. The bike is currently sitting on its own wheels. This jack might be under the bike, but it's not holding anything up. Um, so she's basically under her own weight, you know, static sag type situation. So this is reading zero. If we stick that on there, 12 and a half degrees. That's the angle that we've got at the minute. Okay. Um, and then if I use my slacker, we stick that on the axle, turn him on. And we just want to go for a point of reference. We'll go for something directly above it. Um, let's just shove it on there, that'll do. So that's in a V. So I'm always going to be in the same place. And what's that? 155 mil. Right then. Cool. Right, remember those two numbers. Let's see where we end up. Perfect, but it's better than it was. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah. Okay, where's the new stuff? Right, so these were barely done up. And I do mean barely. It's like one of them just you didn't even have to crack it. So it's just as well we're doing it. All right, there we're loose. I need to do with a clean. Lots of smearing there, isn't it? And whilst I'm in here, I am just going to grease all this lot up again. Right. Right, so we're giving it a clean up on the inside. Um, anytime I take a back wheel out, I always have the sprocket carrier off, clean out anything that's in there, and just replace it with fresh grease. Because it just stops the weather and that getting in. Um, so, you know, you might as well. Um, right, where's my sprocket? Right, so I want that on that outside so I can see how many teeth is in it. And then it is going on there.
Right, 60 newton meters. Um, whilst I've got it apart, I might as well give it a brush. Bit of a spritzer. Right, so you can probably see the dog bones a little bit better from back here. Uh, these are the dog bones here. So they're clamped onto the, the middle of the bottom suspension linkage and they're onto the top of the swing arm up there. And you just know that they're going to be a pain to get off. <laughs> right, that's um, uh, 17 mil. That was surprisingly easy. Oh, well, this one was just a massive pain to get off. The nut over here. Is just been well it's not in great shape someone's had a go at it in the past um, and it's seen better days I ended up knocking a, a socket onto it just to get a decent grip yeah we need another nut there I think Right, so that's it. So that one's undone. That one's undone. Right. So. Let's pull that pin out. So there's one of them. I don't think it's gotten anything on it. The other one's got A and B on it. Right. Well, we'll compare lengths in a minute. <laughs> See, that just sounds dodgy as hell, did it? Yeah. <laughs> right, it can come out the way. Pull this pin out. And the bottom pin. Come on. Oh, don't say my exhaust is in the way. No, it isn't. <laughs> and here's the other one. All right, so these are the ones that's come off the bike. Those are the ones that came with the bike and these are the ones that's going on the bike because they're standard ones. So I suppose the first question is, is it any D? Yeah, they're shorter than the standard ones. Um, by how much? It's a good half hole off. It is. Whole centre on that is six mils different. Right, so we know she's going to be sitting down a little bit when I put those ones on. As far as this one goes, the jack-up kit that came with the bike, that's even shorter still. So that'll be jacking it right up. I know the standard lift kits is 30 mil, 40 mil, Sorry, 30 mil, 50 mil, and 70 mil. Um, I don't know which, you know, what what these ones are, um, but it's these ones that he's going back on the bike anyway. So I don't really care. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what the difference is, though. Right, okay. Let's get these back on. 
Right, we're just trying to get the back wheel back in. <laughs> yeah, it ain't happening. <laughs> so the differences I've made is obviously we've got the sprockets on, front and back, that's all stock. And we've got a stock dog bone in there. But the trouble is I can't get the pin to line up. I can't get the pin through. Even if I get it quite tight, we're still about three mil out because of the chain length. Um, so where I put the slightly longer dog bones on, essentially that has brought the swing arm back up to where it should be. And the chain going round the sort of three points of contact, obviously as this angle comes back up again, the distance from there to there increases. And that's enough to mean that this chain is now junk. I can't use it. I need another one. Bloody hell. What this? <laughs> right, I need to order another chain then. Oh, that'd be all right. It's had new sprockets. It might as well have a new chain as well, eh? Um, there's nothing wrong with this chain. Um, you know, it's in it's in good nick, and you know, it's not worn, and there's no stretchy bits or anything else on it. But it ain't going to work on here. So I need to get another one of them sorted. Just with letting the jack down so she does sort of sit on her own two wheels again. Not putting any pressure on it because the pin's not all the way through. But you can see it does look different, right? So just that little bit, that six mil difference of hole centers equates to quite a lot, quite a lot. <laughs> and I've got three different ones now as well. When we actually come time to project build it and I stick these on, uh, this is a set of Ashrad forks. We'll unbox them at some point and you can have a squint. They do need a bit of work. They are grubby as hell. Don't know when they was last serviced. Forks will probably need changing. But they're a cartridge fork and that's what's going to give us all the adjustability that I'm after. And yeah, we can respring it and we can change the shim stacks and you know change the valve in and all sorts of other stuff and goof about with it and make it work right. But they are shorter than the forks that's on it at the minute. <laughs> you can see where this is going, can't you? I'm probably going to need to get another set of dog bones to lower it, not jack it up. Not if I want it to handle properly. Um, they're the only consideration that we've got is ground clearance, but we're going to be fine. That ain't going to be an issue. Um, but you know, step by step, we're doing it right. We're thinking it through and we're checking everything as we go in. That's why I took all the measurements. Um, when it does come time um, to want to lower the back end, I've got good frames of reference here and from this I can work out how long the dog bones need to be. Dog bones ain't just steel either. No, they've got a hard coating on them too and it needs it. Just for where the damn thing sits underneath the bike, it needs it. You can't just paint them and think everything will be all right because it won't, not for very long anyway. Um, so I haven't got the option of getting stuff coated. There's probably a firm locally that would do it for me, but if I know the whole centers, then I can just get one ordered and that's what we'll do. Um, I'm probably going to make an adjustable set just so I can set it up on the bench. Because once I get all the geometry right with her as she is at the minute, and basically I'm going to fine tune that just by raising and lowering the forks through the yokes. Um, so I can get it to handle the way I want it to handle sort of thing. Um, then we can measure the whole thing, we'll know what the rake and the trail and the wheelbase and the ride height and everything else will be. And then I can just order a set that's the right height that I know is going to work, that I know is going to be safe, that I know has got the coating on and it's not just some random, oh I'm going to jack it up a bit and see what happens. <laughs> the bike has got to handle at the end of the day and it's got to handle well. So that's what we do. Anyway, so I couldn't finish it today. I didn't even think that would be a problem, but it was. So, but there you go, it's one of those things, isn't it? Um, so I'm gonna get another chain sorted. We'll throw that on. Um, I was hoping this was gonna be the last video before Dino Day, but it ain't gonna be. <laughs> Dino Day is still happening Thursday the 11th at 9.30, and I am quite looking forward to it. The only thing I've got to do after that is put some new tyres on it, scrub them in, 
and then start monkeying about with it properly. <laughs> that's going to be right laugh. <laughs> right, that's where I'm going to leave it. Thank you ever so much for joining us. Do stay safe. Stay safe. Why do I keep doing that? Um, and we'll see you again next time. Adios. <laughs>